I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this must be then the next page. Marissa, how are you? I am terrific. How are you? Whoa! <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> no, I am terrific as well, because we get to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. We get to add value to people. Mm -hmm. And we get to talk about cellular issues. Yes. Well, we, not really. We get to... Uh, Data talk. transmission speeds. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Cellular issues could be anything. Like, I've got a cellular problem. Who knows? <laughs> you know, um, we learned something when we researched this. We did. So, I never, you know, I remember when 3G. So, the title of, of today's post and today's podcast is Don't Forget About 3G. And people are like, 3G, Dave, that is so old. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do remember. Do you remember your first cell phone? Yes. What was it like? Um, it was a flip phone and like nothing was in color. It was all okay. black and white and you had to, it was like the T9 keyboard where you had to like hit, you know, three, 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 five, five, two, two to type anything. Yes. And, and, uh, and I bet you were quick at that. Yeah. I got real quick. <laughs> and that was back in the day when like you didn't have unlimited text plans. And my mom every month would be like, who are you talking to? Right. Because I had so many text messages. But she I was would always... know how many texts you sent. <laughs> yeah. Because I was always like, I loved to talk on the phone. I loved calling people. And then it was like, now I can talk and text. Sign me At up. At the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think that that was like, probably even before 3G. Like there had to be something before 3G, right? 2G. Yeah. There was 2G. I don't know if we ever had G. Probably yeah. back then, G was just a rating for movies. Who knows? <laughs> but I remember my first cell phone kind of looked like a peanut. It was kind of, it wasn't a flip phone. Mm -hmm. I was so excited when I got a flip, but it was, and it was pretty big. Yeah. But I still wore it on my hip. <laughs> 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 and I remember I actually lost it downtown once. Oh, wow. And we were doing something, maybe going to this, we parked near, um, the dinosaur, and we had to walk to the skating rink or something mm -hmm. in, in, in Clinton Square. And all of a sudden, I got home. I'm like, where's my phone? And believe it or not, some very kind gentleman found it and called me. You know, and how he called me, I don't know. Um, and he just said, I found your phone. Or maybe I called the number, something like that. But he yeah. goes, hey, I found your phone. I must have called him because there's no way he would have known to call me. I called the phone and he answered and said, listen, I found this phone. I knew somebody would call. You can pick it up here at my apartment. And it was like, wow, that was like heart palpitations. Um, there was no find went, my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, there was no, there was no find your phone back then. But I, I, I was like horrible at trying to text on that. But all I was trying to do was make a phone call once in a while. Mm -hmm. But then we went from 3G to 4G. And then there was 4G LTE, and I was sure LTE meant light, <laughs> and it doesn't. So I really thought that G had some scientific term or LTE. It didn't. G just meant generation, and LTE was long-term evolution, and like, are you serious? And so now there's 5G, and I, I don't even know. I guess it's just speed. But the 3G I want to talk about, and I heard this a couple of weeks ago when I was listening to um, a podcast, 3G stands for grounded, gifted, and growing. And when we're looking for leaders, just remember 3G. If you're looking for the next leader to advance in your organization or a leader to put on a team, find somebody who is grounded, gifted, and growing. Mm -hmm. And as I did a deep dive in thinking through these things, that's really what we need if we think about just those three things. And I really think in that order, grounded, gifted, and growing. So let's, let's start with the first one, the grounded one. And I've, and I've heard this many, many times that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. So thinking about that, this really tells us why it is so critical for a leader to be grounded. We can, we can all think about people who were given power and it went nuts. It went to their head. Um, 
they felt that they could utilize that power to influence people to, in some cases, do horrible, evil things, immoral things, whatever, you know, they abused it is clearly what they did. So we really, really need to look at this first piece here. Is this person grounded? Um, and I'm sure people are saying, so what do you mean by grounded? I, I think the first thing is, for somebody to be grounded, they need to know who they are. And, and you and I, before we, we hit record, we talked about the why. Mm -hmm. I think anybody who has a why that isn't about others can't be a leader. Now, now, does that sound like a too bold of a statement? I'm I'm processing my my brain is moving at a three G speed right now. So, <laughs> so take your take your time. But yeah, look, look, I, if a, if I a get person's it. why is not mm -hmm. about others, they can't lead. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It, you know, you think about how someone who is grounded is has great character, right? Which kind of goes hand in hand with that statement. It's not. It's not about them or their ego or recognition. Right. It's about yeah. others. Yes. Now, you know, what we will notice, though, is that most people who like to lead have a high level of ego. And I, and I don't, and I, and I, so often we think about ego as something that's really, really bad, but mm -hmm. let's, maybe we can use the word confidence instead of ego because ego is more inward focused i guess but but if you're going to lead you got to be a person that has confidence that understands that you're going to you're going to be in the limelight and and that's okay and there's nothing there's nothing really wrong with that but the reason you do it has to be to help other people you know if, if in when we talked about um the the c's i don't know how many three c's we had well we got we're doing a lot with the alphabet here yeah you know um but because we did talk about character mm -hmm. as one of the cornerstones of, of leadership. And you're right, character is. You, you can't have people that are, that, are, um, that are low in character that will sell out their team, that will sell out people, that will sell out what's right to advance their agenda. And that, that's character. You know, character is really having that inner courage to stand up for your beliefs, regardless of what people say about it regardless of what people think about it you got to speak up and and unless a person is grounded they won't and and think about um think about let's say you're an emerging leader in an organization and um a senior leader is is being um, maybe not abusive but overly hard on your team if if you're not grounded enough to stand up in a private meeting i don't call them out publicly but in a private meeting say listen you know, I, I'm sorry, but I, I just can't support that. These are my people. If you have a problem with something they're doing, you come to me. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're talking about with being grounded. It's, it's not about you. It's always about your team. Um, you know, when, when we give people power and, there's, and they're not grounded and it's not about others, you can see teams blow up. Um, you can have people that are extremely gifted just shut down. And, and I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of a situation with one of my coaching clients where, and, and I really need to talk to him about maybe allowing us to interview him for a podcast because um, he is a phenomenal leader today and his 360 was horrible. And when I started working with him, you know, I was, he, was, he was telling me that he was very successful what he did and, and, um, and he was to a point. But what he got from people was compliance and people shut down their giftedness. Now, the nice part for him, and I love working with him, is when as soon as he recognized why he was acting the way he was and that it was inappropriate, and he was just, he would shout at people and swear at people and that type of thing. Um, once he realized how people were feeling, he changed almost immediately. Wow. And he and and so now his team is just flourishing mm -hmm. to the point that the organization where he works 
is asked him to focus now on improving systems in the organization because the team is just doing well. So that's that's this part. That's how important being grounded was. And if at first I would have thought maybe he wasn't that grounded, but he was. As soon as he saw how he really was, he recognized that it's not about him. It's about others. And man, what a what a trajectory this this gentleman's been on. It's it's amazing. So that that grounded piece is is huge. Um giftedness. So our second G you know, some may say that we overuse this word, but I don't think so because the reality of giftedness is when leadership is hard, it is really hard, and um, you got to be, you, you have to have something inside of you that that energizes you when you're given the opportunity to lead. And that's why I say everybody's gifted. All of us have multiple gifts, but some are gifted in this leadership role where they perhaps they see things others don't see so they might have some vision that others don't see they look at a mess and say this is an opportunity not a burden not a challenge not a, a challenge in a bad way um they, they just they, they see challenges as opportunities mm-hmm. you know they may see a team that just is struggling and say you know what all the right pieces are there we just need to figure out how to connect them so you want people that are gifted, but leadership is really, really hard. It's messy. And and I I made a note for us to talk about is, you know, and I've said this on the podcast. I remember a day when I called home on my way home and I basically said to my wife, you know, God didn't put me on this earth to make people happy. And she didn't criticize me. But she didn't she just said, Wow. That's interesting. What's going on? So she she took me through a path of of discussing it. But the reality is that if you're a leader, yeah, you you maybe not be put on this earth to make people happy, but you are put on this earth to add value to other people. And it's exhausting. Why do you think leadership is so exhausting? You know, it's a it's a lot of practicing like awareness and oh yeah yeah you know like maintaining your your stress and maintaining yes. you know, le- leading meetings having difficult conversations right um helping others break through yep. you know whatever they need to break through and sure there, there's a lot it's you know i i lead my little humans all day long <laughs> It's well, a yeah, little bit different, are. but it's, yes. you know, it's like, it's a lot to put, to put yourself out there and to think to strategically and to then develop others, which is right. a big responsibility of leaders is to find yes. other people that are grounded, gifted and growing and help them nourish that and flourish right. and be the next generation. Exactly. You know, it's, it's very similar to parenting. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we've talked about on the podcast where Dave Ramsey says, if you hire someone, you have to choose to love them. It doesn't mean we like them, but it means we do choose to love them. And loving people is rewarding, but exhausting. Because you have to be there for them. Yeah. And and we have to realize that, you know, if I have a person that works for me, um, that's one of my team members, are they, what are they going through in their life? Are they, are they wrestling with, with aging parents? Are they wrestling with, with teenage kids that might be rebellious? Are they wrestling Mm -hmm. with toddlers that don't sleep? You know, I remember (laughs) there was one point where, um, when, when Tim, our youngest was born, our three other kids slept in, we had a, we had a dining room, living room that didn't have any furniture in it yet. We literally moved a mattress in there to get our other kids far enough away from Tim when he would scream at night <laughs> that he wouldn't wake them up. I mean, I'm thinking so... Survival. <laughs> survival. And it was a long time. And I'm thinking, how many days did I go to work l- with limited sleep? It's hard. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I'm thankful that my bosses didn't say, well, boy, is he grumpy today. Mm-hmm. You know, they were more concerned about the whole individual and and so leadership if 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 we're going to be a leader 
you know, we need to have this giftedness that says, this is all about that other person. And how can I, and we need to get excited about helping other people grow and helping other people develop. Because we realize this giftedness in leadership, that person realizes that, to use the phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. So if the organization has this wonderful, um, nurturing, growing mindset, everything's going to get better. The people get better, sales get better, quality gets better, revenues improve. And when that's lacking, all of those things start to tank. There is one thing, though, that, that I put in here, and that's you need to prioritize rest and downtime. Um, a leader can't go all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember once, and I was sharing this with you before we hit record, that, that I had a stretch where um, I had these extended responsibilities outside of work, and it was a six-year period where I, I was having to do a lot of things for my church. And, and at one point, I traveled nine out of 11 weekends. Wow. And I remember um, going to my doctor because I couldn't, and our listeners already know that I always have upper respiratory issues. Um, I went to my doctor and I just said, you know, listen, what's wrong with me now? And, and basically he just said to me, um, when are you going to rest? I said, what do you mean? He goes, until you're going to tell me that you're going to rest, I'm going to tell you you're not getting better. And so I literally had to say no to a couple events that I should have gone to. And you know what? Just two weeks of, I didn't stay home from work, but two weeks of scaling back my level of stress and my travel, I felt better. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say that had I go, if I could go do that again, I would have taken time off work. Um, because when we keep pushing it, even if we're gifted in leadership, if you don't prioritize rest, you become a bad leader, which is known as a boss. Well, and I imagine it's it's difficult to stay grounded when you're not rested. Right, you can't. You're exactly right. Actually, all yeah. three of these, mm-hmm. the gift, the grounded, the gifted, and the growing, you can't do when you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good point. When we're when we're exhausted, our grounding even gets shaken, and we become much more self focused because we're miserable. Yep. Physically, emotionally, mentally, we're just miserable. So this, so for all of this to work, you really, really, really need to prioritize downtime. I, I worked for um, a company once, and the owner it was a Swiss company, and the owner said he wanted us to always take at least two weeks of vacation at a time, because he said it takes you a week to be able to relax enough to rest. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, and yeah, and I, and I, that my statement was going to be, and I, I never heeded that advice. Um, the longest I ever took, I think, was ten days because mm-hmm. we traveled to Europe with our family. So, mm-hmm. but it's true if you think about it, you know, unless you unless you practice it. So I'm thinking his name was was Ernst Neunschwander. He had a name that was I don't know his last name was huge, um, but. I'm thinking that you might be able to learn to relax quicker. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, what are your thoughts? Do you think that, that becoming more um, aware of learning how to be mindful, that we can relax, learn to relax quicker? Is, does that make sense to you? Yeah. If you think about it, if you're practicing this rest, you know, if you're practicing resting, whether it yep. be just by building it into your schedule or... <clears throat> Ta- taking a nap, you know, essentially you're training yourself to yeah. to use that as a coping mechanism. Right. Um, so I, I think that makes complete sense. And it allows you to, I think, to manage your overall stress or as things come your way, you can tackle them more appropriately and recognize yes. and more, more quickly recognize when you need that downtime. Absolutely. And you know what? I think we just figured out what we're going to talk about next. Downtime? <laughs> rest? Resting. Resting and downtime. I love rest. Does that rest. make sense to you? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I need to work on that. And my guess is you do too. So <laughs> together we'll study it this mm-hmm. week and, and we'll talk about it next week. So let's jump into the last one of the three G's growing. Now, you know, anybody that's ever read my writing or listened to this podcast knows that at some point I'm going to get to growth. Mm-hmm. Um. It is critical 
that we find people who are growing. Don't expect a person to grow when you give them the opportunity to lead. Because then they're going to grow for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who's growing before I give them the opportunity to lead. And, and you can tell, you can tell when a person's growing. Um, they, there's an excitement about them. There's an energy about them. They, they are always looking to improve. Now, they're going to be a tougher person to manage, but an easier person to lead. So let me explain what I mean. Yeah, by that. explain that. So they're going to be tougher to manage because they're going to challenge you more. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to keep them in a box. And even good leaders from time to time get tired and try to keep people in a box. Great leaders don't. Great leaders are always trying to expand the box and expand the boundaries for their people to develop. But let's face it, we just talked about it. Sometimes we get tired and we become more a boss than a leader. So bosses want to control things. Leaders want to expand and make things better for people. So that person that's, that's growing is going to be really, really hard to control because they will always say, but you know why? I just saw this. Why can't this happen? And that's something we need to, 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 to foster in our teams. Did that answer make sense? Yeah, I think I, I think I understand what you're saying. But okay. I also think there there will be situations where it's a little bit more passive or silent, where someone might be doing their own, you know, growth work on the side that yep. that comes out in other ways. Like you might notice that they are behaving differently in meetings. Yes. Or yes. um or like taking on other things or help working with other people in different ways. Yep. Um, so Very I think good. sometimes you have to be a little bit more aware uh, because it might not always be right in front of you that Very, very people good. are growing. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. And, and, and the best, the best leaders are looking for that in people. You know, where is something shifting? Where is something changing? And the other thing that can happen is a good leaders will, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot when we talk about facilitating meetings is, Good leaders will say something like, what am I missing? Is mm -hmm. there anything that we didn't cover? And somebody that's growing is going to have some, some answers to that question mm -hmm. because they're thinking in an expanded way. So, we're, you know, the people that are growing, we're going to notice it. They're, they're going to be different. There's going to be a change that's occurring with them over time. We're going to be able, and hopefully we're having enough conversations, enough one-on-ones, we're going to see that. They're, they're going to be somewhat excited. And, and they're going to be looking forward to things. Um, there, there's an energy, there's a palpable energy in someone who is growing. And it's, they're fun to be around. You know, they're, they're sharing news that people, they're sharing what they're learning. And when mm -hmm. you share what you learn, you want to be around that person. Yeah. I, I made a statement in, in my notes that I sent you is, you know, um, without growth you can't even lead yourself does that sound like a brazen statement I think does it, it make sense no i think that makes sense and i you know i just because as i was typing it i'm thinking you know dave that's a really bold statement but but it's true if if i think back of the people that that i've had the privilege to lead over my lifetime those that weren't growing it's almost as though i had to babysit them Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if you, if you think about it, like with our, with our children, you know, you've got three lovely young girls, little girls. And as you see every year, I've got three. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Two. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I, I added one to your family. <laughs> you have two. lovely. I have young two. <laughs> yeah. No, man, where'd the third one come from? My dad listens to this podcast and he's going to be like, <laughs> he goes, uh Oh, <laughs> Dad, there's okay. only two. <laughs> there's only two. Yep, Dad, don't worry. There are only two. So you have these two. And I, I guess I kept thinking, how old's Isla? She'll be four. So she's almost She'll three. She's, yeah, okay. she's three. So maybe I was thinking age. <laughs> or it's just a senior moment. Let's just face it. <laughs> the brain isn't what it used to be. But as you watch them, as they mature, they need less daily attention in terms of for the basic 
life sustaining kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, all of a sudden they can begin to eat for themselves. All of a sudden, you know, we can potty train them. You know, all of a sudden they can put their clothes on themselves. And it's because they're growing. They don't need that intense care all the time. Now, you know, this is something you wouldn't know about yet, but even when they are mature and off on their own, you, there's still some things that you start to, you still worry about and you still try to help. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens with the people that we lead. If they don't grow, we got to babysit them. And that's a problem. So we really need to keep, always keep folks growing. Um, without being intentional uh, about growth, you're not going to grow. You can tell that, again, I talked about there's an excitement about them. They look forward to each day. They look forward to experiences. They're, they're going to feel um, that, that, you know, when you place a real, a big challenge on them, it's not a burden, it's an opportunity. Um, and, and if you can't see this in people, in a person, it doesn't mean they're a bad person, but it probably means they shouldn't be put in a leadership position doesn't make them bad. It just means they're probably not the person that's going to lead the team. So, and I don't, I don't think I need to say more about growth because we've done whole podcasts on it. But, but really, the, just remember the 3G when we think about our leaders. Are they grounded, gifted, and growing? If you see somebody that has those 3G, that is 3G, give them an opportunity. Because they may surprise you. And they may be people that, if you think about it, um, they may be the most unlikely because any behavior profile can lead. So we, we talked about this and we talked about the DISC behavior profiles. And too many people think that only the D's and the I's can lead. No, anyone can lead if, they have a, if they're gifted in leadership and they will lead in a very unique and special way. So do you think I exhausted my topic of 3G? I, don't know, I think I actually have one more question for you. So no. <laughs> okay, go for it. So all three of these, like what if you see someone who's extremely grounded, very gifted, but maybe only slightly showing signs of growth? Is that something that you could nourish and help that person along the way so that they are completely like the whole yeah. package? Absolutely. You know, um, they, I, I think growth is something that, well, and I've talked about this. I believe that as, as a society, we do not focus enough on growth. We focus mm -hmm. on goals. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it. Like when you go through school, people give you these goals and we think that once you get this diploma, you're done. No, that's just a mile marker. Mm -hmm. So people that aren't taught to grow may not even understand what it means. So I think the greatest way now, so the question might be, so how do we teach people to grow? I think we model that. Mm -hmm. The leader has to be growing every day and, and showing excitement and passion about growth with their team. And you will see these people begin to pick up on it. Um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the leadership table. So someone who isn't, who is grounded and gifted, but there's just a few little sparks of growth, but nothing really happening, bring them to the leadership table and see if it catches. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can get them there. The one thing that I think is a deal breaker is grounded. Mm -hmm. If they're not grounded, don't go there. Right. So the other two may not be as obvious, but that's... You know, yes. you, if you think that there's yeah. some glimmers of those three yeah. things, invite them to the table. Right. And, I mean, the the mm -hmm. giftedness one, maybe it may be easier for us to see giftedness in the dominance, in the influence behavior profile. It's right. going to be harder to recognize in the steadiness and the compliance. Mm -hmm. But it might be there. Right. And if we really know them, we will see it. Mm -hmm. But the grounded piece to me is the deal breaker. There's nothing worse than someone who's given a position of authority that's not grounded because what you get is a mess. And it, it can take out your organization. So, and, I, and I've seen, you know, well, we, we can see if we just look at 
the history of corporations, we can see when someone became a leader who wasn't grounded. All of a sudden, you know, they lie, they cheat, they steal, you know, there's no moral compass and the organization can flounder or fail. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? No, that, that was a great question. That answers it for me. Well, okay. I guess my last question is what are we going to talk about next week? But we kind of already we did. teased that. We think we're going to talk yeah, about rest I, and rest and, and downtime. Yeah. So, you know, we'll both do some homework. Um, mm -hmm. I'll try to get that, get my point sketched out to you soon. So you can see what I'm thinking about with that. Great. Um, because I think that that's, that's a skill that I think we all needed to learn at a different level. Mm -hmm. How do we shut down quicker to rejuvenate so that we can make the most of the time that we're given? Because most organizations give X number of days of, of vacation time or paid time off. Well, if... If Mr. Neunschwander thought I needed five days to learn how to rest or to, to disconnect enough to rest, I just wasted a week of that PTO. But if I can figure out some tools to get there quicker, I get more time to myself. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll talk about next week. Great. Any exciting plans coming up? Uh, No, no, not really. I'm excited that spring is just around the corner yes so yes, just yes, kind yes. of preparing for that hoping that we continue with this mild weather yeah and see the sun i cannot wait i i can't as I, i'm looking forward to it as well there's nothing like spring to give us some energy mm -hmm. and to give us opportunities to get outside and breathe fresh air mm -hmm. which is awesome so with that i'm dave freund i'm marissa norcross and this was the next page